All right, let's talk about the easy way to brief your passengers on a general aviation flight, including what to say and how to say it to people who are not pilots like yourself, but will be joining you in the airplane. All of what I'm about to share is especially useful if you're a new pilot, if you're somebody who flies a lot, but maybe doesn't carry passengers all the time, and that's a little bit of a new experience. I think this is also valuable, too, because it adds polish to the flying experience. You're generally going to do this briefing before you even start the engine. And while somebody is just getting situated, maybe they feel a little bit even uncomfortable about being in a small plane, uh, potentially, for the very first time. So you're here to add that comfort, that polish, that professionalism that really sets a tone for the rest of the flight. Quick summary here of what I'll be discussing in this briefing to the passengers, a flight overview. We'll talk about seatbelts potential evacuation, information about the fire extinguisher, air sickness and other physiological uh, issues or needs, the intercom system, what they'll be hearing and what they'll be seeing, as well as cockpit seating, whoever's sitting to the right or left of you, but in the front at the controls, what they need to know. And also at the very end, it is important to leave that time for questions. If there's anything unresolved, why not take care of it before things get loud and busy and, uh, you know, the time does not exist to do so. So let's begin with the flight overview. It starts like this. Hey, today we're flying from Airport A to Airport B. And I don't just mean the two cities. You'd be surprised sometimes if we're flying to Los Angeles, the passenger does or maybe doesn't know that we're going to Hawthorne Airport instead of LAX or instead of Burbank or Orange County. So be, be very specific about the airport that you're, well, they know where they're at, but the airport that specifically they're going to and maybe even the FBO or, or where you'll be dropping them off. You also want to tell them a little bit about the flight. You're anticipating a cruising altitude of whatever, let's say 12,500 feet and a total flight time of two hours and 12 minutes, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. This might also be the valuable time to share any other pre-flight information that you have that they could benefit from. Like, it might be a little bit bumpy here on takeoff, or it's going to get dark about halfway through our flight. Anything that would help them mentally prepare. I'm not saying that you want to overload them with information. You definitely don't want to intimidate them with information. But anything that you deem helpful that they know, this is a great time to pass along things that you know about the flight. Because again... You know so much, they generally know so little. So you want to share with them not an overwhelming amount of things, but just the right things that you you think will be beneficial. Seatbelts, this is very easy to translate by saying FAA regulations require that all passengers wear their seatbelts during takeoff and landing. But for your safety and my preference, please keep them securely fastened at all times. Uh, it's cheap insurance. It just makes a lot of sense to do so versus to not do so. Evacuation, this is rare, but I want you to know just in case it happens, please familiarize yourself with the exit route and procedures on this airplane. Now, in most general aviation aircraft, two, potentially three doors in total, but usually two, it's quite simple to explain how to get out. Two exit doors on this plane to open, hypothetically, let's say you're in a, a Cessna 172 or 182. Take this latch right here, grab the front of it, pull it all the way up, you'll hear it pop, the door will open, Make your way out, watch out for the wheel, and watch out for the wing strut that also protrude um, off the side of this airplane. Again, something that you're familiar with, you're cognizant of, but maybe your passengers wouldn't be. Fire extinguisher, just in case, it can be found under the seat, between our seats, in the back, wherever it's located. And it's a standard fire extinguisher, nothing special about it. Uh, you'll also want to tell them that in the rare event of a fire that we will we'll be expediting a rapid descent. And this is standard procedure. I mean, you know this from your checklist, from all your training. That you're trying to get that airplane down on the ground, maybe even put out the fire uh, with that induced airspeed as fast as possible. But they're not going to know that. And they see the combination of smoke coming out of the front, and all of a sudden the nose of the airplane is aggressively pointed downwards. They're going to think two things are instantly going wrong. So you want to just, again, you want to pass along this information without being too scary or intimidating, but you generally want to say, if we have any type of fire, this is what I'm going to do, just so you know. But you're not expecting any of this to happen. Air sickness. If you feel uncomfortable, please notify me, including if you're dizzy, lightheaded, or drowsy. 
Now, you're mentioning all those things because you're trying to check on your passenger's health, whether they are suffering from hyperventilation, potential hypoxia, though. What, what if that's the case and other passengers on the plane could be affected or you as the pilot could be affected from that lack of oxygen in your bloodstream? So what you're saying is it's better if we all share this information. I want to know if something's not right with you. We can make a better decision. We can find another suitable place to land. We can conclude the flight. We can try and do something to make the experience uh, uh, more, more, uh, more able to happen rather than trying to cut this thing off and trying to force you through the flight if it's going to be a miserable time. We're trying to make it better for you, the passenger. So please disclose any current medications that also may affect your judgment or normal health. I say that because oftentimes you know your passenger. And you generally have a good read on them and their body language. But if you get into flight instructing, if you get into charter flying, you're you're simply not going to know the people that hop right next to you in your airplane. And all you want to know is, is there anything that I should know in case I need to be the one to help you or help the situation, right? So you're not trying to get too personal here with anybody, but you're trying to get a good gauge on, on where they stand. And I realize that we're 10 items in here and I'm going through this slow because I'm explaining it. But you can get through this, you can get through this entire briefing in two to three minutes. And I'm telling you, those two to three minutes you might spend before even turning on the engine to go over all this with your passenger uh, generally creates a lot better experience in the end. Now, in terms of the intercom, you'll hear both air traffic control and our conversation between you and me and everybody else in the headset. During busy phases of flight, including taxi, takeoff, approach, and landing, Radio communications, as you know, or a pilot, are imperative. So you're trying to pass that along that at times, I'm really going to need to pay attention to what's coming through the headset here. And because we can all hear each other all the time, I'm requesting, as you see, number 13, cabin silence is going to be requested at those times. Taxi, takeoff, approach, and landing, right? Those are busy phases of flight with the radio, specifically with air traffic control. You're just asking that your passengers... Uh, stay a little bit more reserved and quiet during those times so that you can communicate appropriately and uh, you'll let them know when those times are. All right. Also about the intercom, during normal flight, you're going to see frequent flashing lights and beeping tones. I mean, think about anything you do with a GPS or, um, you know, even further with autopilot systems and the bells and whistles that we all, all know make indications, noises, and sounds. Those are things, right, that are normal to us. You know exactly what it means when you disconnect the autopilot. But a passenger hears that for the first time, that loud beep, which is intentionally so, and all of a sudden they're scared. What what was that? It does not sound good. It sounds like it wants my attention. Well, because it does. It was intentional. But that brings me to number 15. Don't be alarmed of all these things that you're seeing. They are all part of normal flight operations. Again, got to separate yourself Uh, as the pilot from somebody who's not used to everything in front of them, there are worrisome things that they might see that are perfectly normal. You're just trying to make that distinction. All right, cockpit seating. Somebody's likely sitting up front with you. To the passenger, let's say hypothetically in the right seat, please keep clear of the moving control wheel or even side stick if there is one and pedal inputs. It's important that these passengers know those are active. And those could affect the safety of the flight if they were to suddenly alter them or control them. Uh, so you, you, you need to let them know. And, and it's, it's kind of actually good in this case to put a little bit of fear and intimidation into the passenger so that they don't accidentally, accidentally do something. So they're overcautious. I'd rather have that than the other way around. Also, this, if you're sitting up front or anywhere in the back, if you see other aircraft or any other concerns to our flight in a near vicinity please appropriately notify me. And when I say appropriately notify me, if it's something that's 500 miles off in the distance that they can see, or, you know, let's say, let's say even a hundred miles off, um, it's not probably imminent to your flight, right? But if it's, if there's another plane at your six that you couldn't see that came a little bit uncomfortably close or is getting closer, it certainly would be nice to use that extra set of, of eyes. So you're, you're just trying to say, Hey, if you see anything that you think doesn't look right, Just ask in the appropriate time and place and way. And last but not least, don't hesitate with any questions on that note during the flight. If there's anything that's concerning, you just have a simple question. Once we get up to our cruising altitude, that's going to be the best time to have conversation. Um, After takeoff, well before landing, the workload, as you know, gets reduced. 
So you want this passenger to enjoy the flight. And like I said, the pre-flight passenger briefing, I really do think goes a long way. It's a couple minutes and it's going to smooth things out every time. It's going to up your level of professionalism in flying. And again, it's, it's going to set a tone for the entire flight start to finish. So hopefully you can use those. Let me know in the comments section if I missed anything, if you'd like to add something or how you use a passenger pre-flight briefing just like this.